Hello, Twin Minds here, and welcome to part two of Forestry in Farming Simulator 22. In this video, I'll be covering where to sell your wood, as well as testing sale prices to see if we can find the best profit. You'll see here I have quite a few logs on trailers here, brought over from my previous test bed. I figured they'd be handy for some of the testing up ahead, as well as a little bit of a a little bit of a mess that I made for myself. I tried to bring over all the other small trees, but they were just... They were just a nightmare, so I decided to set up a third grow field. Because apparently I didn't hate myself enough yet. So we have a third grow field. All these trees are already planted in order, covering all of the various tree types except for uh, the downy service berry, which was the special one that we can't do anything with. So I'll be growing all these up so I can use them in testing. We're parked right next to the sawmill, which is right over that little hill there. I had made a partial road up there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use that to get wood up there, but we'll we'll try it anyway. Why not? And um, over here, I have all the various buildings that we'll need for the production stuff. So we'll get to those. Uh, don't worry about that pile. It's fine. So first and foremost, where do you sell your wood? It's not listed anywhere in this menu. We've got wood chips, but that's not quite the same thing. There is no wood. We've got planks and furniture, which we're obviously getting to later, but no wood, no trees, no nothing. So wood in this game has always been a bit of a mystery unless you know what you're doing. On the map, we do have a sawmill. So if you were clicking around looking for a place to sell your wood, you may have come across this and found that that is probably a good place to do it. But that's it. There's no other information. So, the sawmill is the first likely place to sell your wood. And uh, let, me, let me grab a tree. Tree. Let's go over to the sawmill. Let's, let's, let's go over to the sawmill. Hmm. Let's try that again. Let's go over to the sawmill. There we go. So here we are over at the sawmill. There's a lovely square right here. The lovely, lovely square right there. Sure, that'll, that'll do. And then right here, sell wood. As you can see in the uh, F1 menu, sell wood, but with R. Turns out you have to be in the right location. Lovely square over here. There we go. Sell wood with R. And we got 340 bucks for that birch tree. Not a remarkable sell price. But that's how you sell wood to the sawmill. If your map has a carpentry on it, you can also sell at the carpentry. Now the catch to that is you can only sell and actually get money if you don't own it. So if you buy the carpentry so you can use it for the later production that we're going to cover, you can no longer sell wood to actually make money at the carpentry. This is what the carpentry looks like in person, at least on Elm Creek. I know there are two different models of this building, we'll cover that later. But you just come around back, lean your wood up against the building, and hit R to sell. 341, ooh, we're a dollar more. That's probably related to my cutting method, but we're going to round that to 340. That matches the other price as well. The other catch to note that is arguably the most important of all is that due to the way that Giants has implemented the production, the sawmill and the carpentry are not only sell points, but they are also production points that you can purchase to make stuff out of the wood. Now, the reason that's important is that that means that they have an internal capacity of how much wood they can store. The sawmill can hold um, 110,000 liters, and the carpentry can only hold 30,000 liters. The problem is, unlike a regular sell point, which will just accept whatever you put into it and give you money, and unlike all of the other production points that once they fill up to their capacity, they stop accepting goods, the carpentry and the sawmill will accept anything and not pay you if it's full. I got one dollar for that entire tree, because it's full. I filled it up just for that test. 
so you have to be very careful, and I'll be giving the leader numbers for these trees later, so you can try to keep track of what you're feeding to the sawmill. And the reason that you need to keep track of that information is because if you don't own these production buildings, because you're trying to sell wood and actually make money, there's no direct visibility to how much wood is in these compared to their maximum capacity. So if you don't keep track of it yourself, you may find yourself selling a $10,000 tree and getting a dollar out of it because the building was at max capacity. And in the next video, I will be covering all of the production information, which includes the time it takes to process all of this material into the next component to determine how often you can feed these machines and get money out of them, which is why we have other sell point options available as well. The other spot, as I mentioned in the first video, is the train. And to do that, we need a log. Once you have your wood securely strapped to your train in either of these two carts, I suspect it would work to put it inside of the grain carts. Because really it's just, you just need to move the physical object. So if you can get it in or on these carts, it would probably work just fine. In fact, let's test that. So we have, we have our log here, works just fine, and then you get in your train and uh, drive it towards the edge of the map. Sold wood, sold wood, and sold wood. It actually sells them as it reaches the end of the map, which is great. And since selling the wood really is just a matter of driving it off the edge of the map, you can get your vehicles here yourself and sell the wood. It's a little bit finicky at times, but it does indeed work on some maps. And not, not completely. But again, finicky, not quite the easiest to work with. You can do it by hand if necessary, and it will just sell. There is a sell trigger here, and it doesn't work if you actually go past it. <laughs> but if we get it from the other side, it should work just fine. Where, where, there it is. I think it's this side of the train tracks, because that's the side of the train tracks that the train actually drives on. So this works in Elm Creek on the east exit of the map. Unfortunately, the way the west exit is built does not let you get close enough to that sell point, but it still works to sell by train. On Hot Baileron, you can do it on the north exit point, but not the southeast exit point. And on Erlingrat, you can do it on either exit of the train by hand. On all of the maps, it works just fine to load up the train and sell the wood that way. Regardless of what you may or may not have done with uh, the production points or anything like that. So the train is always a viable option to sell your wood. Now the other option to sell your wood is through this biogas aka the biomass heating plant which is under the construction production tab selling points you can see there is an actual icon for trees, despite the fact that it doesn't show up in the main menu where you can sell all of the other goods. And this biomass heating plant will take straw, bales, silage, as well as wood chips. As far as I can tell in here, that is the only placeable option for selling. But it is an option if you run out of selling options or don't want to use the train or what have you. And this works the same way as the sawmill. You put your wood in this this little grate area here, and you hit the R to sell wood, and you get your money, 340 bucks. So that was also going to be one of my other pieces of testing, was are the sale prices the same? And as far as the biomass heating plant and the sawmill, those are the same. Now I'm going to do the painful run of bringing a birch tree to the end of the train tracks so I can sell that. So I'll be back with you in a second here. And here we are. I brought the whole darn thing because it was easier that way. So let's unstrap and grab a birch. 
This should be worth 340. Three forty, perfect. So all three of the sale locations that I'm aware of are the same price currently. The next step is to find out if there is any sort of difference in uh, seasonal variety. So let's uh, skip time a little bit here and find out if it's any different in June. All right, here we are in June, and we have another birch tree to sell. 340. Okay, so that tells me that the prices do not seem to be seasonal. Uh, what I'd like to do with my last tree here is fast forward time a few more months just to give it a, a fair test. Alright, and now we're at October. And it is 340. Perfect. So that uh, hopefully solidifies that answer. Never can quite tell. I'll probably do a little bit more thorough testing off camera here just to be sure. But I think that gives us the answer that we need. And we're back over here at our lovely tree farm in progress. Looks absolutely gorgeous in the autumn months. I love that there is variation on the tree colors. Because as you know, they don't all pop at the same time in the fall. So it's nice to see that they accounted for that. Now the other thing I want to test, since those birch trees were grown, I want to test if the placed trees are the same. So let's do a large birch here. That costs 800 bucks. Oh, that's trippy as we're walking forward they don't change differently at random they change based on their position on the map oh that's just that's just weird i dig it but it's weird all right so is a placed tree the same value as a grown tree 339 so 340 that also answers that question. Wonderful. That also makes some of my testing potentially a lot easier, but I'll stick with the grown trees just because that's how most people would end up doing it. So grown trees are the same price as placed trees. And we have also confirmed that making money off of placed trees is not easy or possible. I haven't tested all of them thoroughly, but we'll just assume that you're not going to get nearly as much money back as it costs you to place the tree in the first place. The catch to that, and I'm I'm going to have to test a couple different things with willow, because the willow tree, as I, I kind of failed to notice in my previous video, this is not the full-grown willow tree. I was not able to get it to grow anymore, but that is actually the young stage. So if we go back over to trees, and somewhere in here is willow, here we are. There are two different stages of willow. There's the small and the large. This is the small variety, and this is the large variety. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned that these do seem to be bugged according to reports I've seen from other YouTubers. But mine was bugged differently then theirs was bugged. Theirs just wouldn't grow at all. Mine grew almost instantly to the smallest stage, and then 40-something years later, it never grew to the larger stage. This may be different per map as well, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So I'll be testing the sale prices of the small ones and the large ones, assuming that at some point, Giants fixes that. So that'll be, that'll be a thing to test, and I'll, I'll get there when I get there. I'll try to do them in order. Another thing to note is that I will be paying a lot more attention to the pine and spruce trees because those are the ones that you can work with the forestry machinery. Whereas the stone pine and on can only be done by hand chainsaw. So those are going to get a different test result set and I'll be treating those a little bit differently 
because they'll be much more difficult to work with. So let's just take a moment to get these trees grown up and ready to harvest. And done. So the next step is to collect some data. I have a lot of data to collect, so we're gonna we're gonna start off showing you how to do that, and then I'm gonna you know do all that in my off time because there's just a lot of data to collect. The data that I need to collect is the sale price of a full tree on easy, medium, and hard, just so we can have some solid numbers to work with, uh, as well as the leader capacity of a tree. And since when I cut down the tree, I only get uh, the tree's weight in kilograms, I need to get that information as well. You can see I get the mass in 1.6 tons in the lower right, or um, 1,500 and some change kilograms in the upper left. I think I have a couple different mods that are doing that, and I don't know which one's doing which, but ultimately I only get the information in kilograms. So I gotta get this number in liters as well. So let's get a few more trees. Now these numbers are going to be averaged out. I'm cutting them as best as I can. But um, you can see this one is 1554.7, whereas this one is 1552.4. Negligible difference, but you know, it's worth noting because I'm taking an average out of that. All right. So where are we at right now for difficulty? We're at normal. So let's start off. Let's start off with probably the worst number. Let's go with hard. So we take our tree, and then we sell it, and we get $19. Great. Great. Love it. All right. $19. Cool. Then we'd go to normal, and drop our tree down here, and sell it for that 340 that we were using before. That's why I decided to use the birch trees, because it's a number we're familiar with. And then we drop our last tree here and switch over to easy. And that goes up to 998, so almost a solid thousand dollars. That's great information. And that's a, a stark difference between uh, easy, medium, and hard with that $19 hard sale price. That's, that's going to be some interesting math, I'm sure. So let's cut a couple more down. I think I just need to get leader information. So at, oh, this one's, that was a bad cut, 1549, uh, let's, let's not even use that one. Let's get a, a slightly better one. There we go. 1553.9, perfect. So then we drop our tree off at our storage is empty at the bottom right corner. And we are now at 2390. So. 2,390 liters for a complete birch. And since we know this one's going to be a little bit less, my next step is to do some uh, exfoliating of these trees. So let's... come on. You're not gonna... not gonna work? There we go. Okay. So we do some exfoliating of the trees, get all these branches gone, and it's the lightest of taps. Otherwise, you end up cutting through and losing a little bit of the wood. It's not a huge deal. It's a, a liter or two here and there, but still worth noting. Alright, so now that we have our bare tree, I just want to make sure that the liters are roughly the same. So previously we had 2390. Uh, let's do this on the fresh one over here just to just to have a straight number to work with. So we drop you there. Storage is empty. 2364. So that's roughly on par and I'm assuming I lost a couple liters to cutting off the branches as well as my poor initial cut. That was a few kilograms short. So we'll call that an even number. I'll do a couple more tests just to be sure. But cutting off the foliage does not impact the amount of liters that a tree has for production purposes that will come in handy later. So then I gotta cut down three more trees and exfoliate them. And then we will uh, do sell prices and see what that comes out to. All 
Right, so I have my three bare trees here and one that went a little bit special on me. So we're going to test that as well because that is a current bug that they're planning on fixing eventually, hopefully. Uh, but I want to see if it has any impact on the sale price. So we're currently on hard. So previously with the foliage, it was $19. Now it is $99. That is a heck of a change. All right. Next one. And we switch to normal. It went from 340 to 728. Nice. Not quite as big of an increase as hard. And then we switch to easy. And it went from 998 to 1384. Not bad. Not bad. And then our, our little uh, special exploded tree here, if I can pick you up. There we go. And are you the same? 1378. So close enough. Close enough. So it is the same. It's just exploded textures. There's nothing different with the wood. Also good to know. So the last step, or the last thing that I wanted to test, is the comments that I've read and the barest of information that's available in the help menu uh, that mentions the price of wood not only depends on the length but also the straightness of the delivered pieces. So there's really no information to work with in this game. Um, but the thing that I've read a lot is not only removing the foliage, which turned out to be true, but also removing the branches. Because that leaves you with a straighter, longer piece that is um, branch free. Now, on the spruce and the pine, there are no branches to remove. It's purely decorative foliage that you can remove with a single tap of the chainsaw. So, do these trees have any difference? So, let's test it out. Well, that didn't go as expected. I was trying to work with the, uh, the exploded tree, and it exploded out of existence. Alright, well, I guess I need to cut a fresh one. I'm pretty sure it's still there. Are you still there? Yeah, it's still there. It's just not going to be easy to work with. So we're going we're, we're gonna to pretend that didn't happen and cut down a fresh tree. Oh dear lord, that tree is all sorts of messed up. Look at that. All right, all right. Uh, again, this tree doesn't exist. Let's um, let's put you a little bit out of range here. There you go. Oh, dear. okay. There is no out of range. Okay. Ah. Uh, hmm. Maybe I go sell this one. It exists. Yeah, I'm going to go sell this one. Goodbye, demon tree. You will not be missed. Also, $72. That tells me that there is... Yeah, I, I was able to cut off some of the foliage, but not all of it before the tree disappeared. So the amount of increase in price is proportional to how much foliage you remove. So if you miss some, it's not as big of a deal. Good to know. Now back to work. Alright, so now we have our three trees here, and the theory behind this is long straight piece without stuff sticking out is better. So uh, let me get some of these branches hacked off, and I'm going to do it as close as I can. And we're going to sell the trunk and the branches all at one shot and see if that price is any better than selling just the tree hole without cutting off the branches. Now, birch was probably not the best choice for this to start off with because the lovely little quirk of farm sim is that if you have too little wood to retain after the cut, it just disappears in. Like that. So I ended up with three whole branches out of all of that. But this is how the game works, and this is how we're going to test it. 
The other branches on some of the other trees are going to be more substantial, so we're going to have a lot more to work with. But this is what happens when you try to cut up a, a birch to a long, straight, thin piece. You're not really going to have much in the way of branches to work with afterward. So that did delete some of the material. And let's see if I can get a number on how much that loss was. We've got 938.5. We've got 30.2. 213 and 52.7 so a little bit of adding later and that number is 1234.4 so going on our previous number of 1552.6 uh, we did lose a little over 300 kilograms in just cutting off those branches so that may drastically affect sale price don't know. We'll find out. I'm just going to put all of them on here and sell the whole tree at one time. Because even these tiny little branches may count as straighter pieces. Who knows? Uh, let's see. What difficulty are we on currently? We're on hard. So previously, full tree sale price was 99 without the foliage on hard. And that is 651. That is a huge difference. Even though we lost 300 kilograms worth of wood we gained six and a half times the price on harp. So, cutting off the branches is important. Very much so. So let's continue that with normal and easy, just to make sure. So I'll get back to you in a sec. Alright, so now we have our two remaining trees to test with. And our normal tree is worth 940 from 728. That's still a pretty decent increase. And our easy tree is worth 1147. So we actually lost a little bit there from 1384. Now, I don't know exactly what the cause of that loss would be. It may be that there is a lot more forgiveness with the branches on easy and the loss of cutting the branches off was more than the straightness value increase so on easy it may be easier go figure to not bother cutting off the branches but i'm going to get all these numbers for all of these trees and i'll get back to you with some some better data and then i have a few more tests to run as well with the pine and the spruce so, uh, back in a jiffy. So, now that I have decimated my forest and collected quite a bit of data, which we'll go over the actual details later, it's time to tackle the spruce, pine, and maybe even the stone pine because it's really long and it fits into the next plans. So, those next plans are to cut at every length available with this machine. And that is one through eight meters at one meter increments. Hold on, hitting the Y button here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, there is a modded machine that can go up to uh, 24 and a half meters at half meter increments. I don't, I don't quite want to go that far. I'm going to stick with the, the vanilla cutting options. And as I showed before, all we need to do is turn on the machine, get it lined up, get it as low as I possibly can and hit the cut option, which is X. That gives me my tree. And we're at eight meter cut length, so let's lift this thing up and swing it around. And then we just keep hitting the cut button. It gives us our eight meter logs. like so. Now I did notice it cut off the end there, so there was a tiny bit of loss, but I suspect that that's not going to be a huge deal. And once we've got our 8 meter logs here, we pick them up and put them in my... well, that's not quite long enough, but it'll it'll do. It'll, it'll work fine. Put, put them all in my prepared lineup here. 
because I have eight full cuts to do. One meter increment, two meter increment, etc., up to eight meter increments. And I need to do that for the spruce, the pine, and then I'm going to have to do it manually for the stone pine using a lovely mod that is called Simply Measure. And you Alt right click to get a starting point, and you can see at the bottom of the F2 menu, as I walk, those meter numbers are going up. So I will have to do the best that I can to get those numbers. What I might do is I might wait until I do the spruce and the pine, since I can do those by machine. And once I've got all the sale numbers for those on easy, medium, and hard, I can take whatever the optimal length is, whatever that comes out to be, and apply that to the stone pine and whatever other trees might qualify for that. I believe the oak, maple, and elm are upwards of 18 to 24 meters each, so those might also be worth trying out, whatever the optimal number is. I've been told 8 meters is the optimal number, so that's why I'm testing that, because I have no, no idea. And I'd love to know, for my own purposes, and for yours. So I'll get back to you when all, all of that's done. And I think, finally, I have all the data that I want. After many, many trees cut, many piles of vehicles, many game reloads, and a few notches off my sanity, I have, I have a lot of data. So let me pull up that data right now, and we'll go over a few of the finer points. First thing to note is the American Elm has the highest leader capacity at 24,543, give or take a few liters here and there. And the other thing to note is that, generally speaking, cutting off the branches and then delivering the wood to the sawmill or wherever uh, will give you more liters per tree than not cutting off the branches. So simply cutting off the branches is more than plenty. There was no difference with cutting off the foliage or um, cutting it up into smaller pieces, like 8, 6 meters, whichever, um, that did not seem to matter. It was just branches cut off or not. So you can see an extra 3,000 liters with the American Elm, uh, an extra 600 liters or so with the Shagbark Hickory, that kind of stuff. Uh, the notable exceptions to that, of course, are the Pagoda Dogwood and the Birch, which uh, cutting off the branches was enough liters worth of tree lost to actually be beneficial to just sell the tree as is. Uh, the American Elm also comes in top with uh, sale price, capping out on easy at $17,204. The next highest after that is Oak at 11407 All these numbers I'm giving, by the way, are on easy difficulty, just because that's where I did most of my testing, uh, but they are all proportional, easy, normal, hard. So if I say something is the best on easy, Chances are it's best on normal and hard as well. There are a couple exceptions to that, most notably the spruce and the placeable poplar had no difference whatsoever between easy, normal, and hard. I took the exact same tree and sold it on all three difficulties, and it was the exact same sale price number each time. Not sure why, that may be a bug, that may be corrected at some point in the future, but for right now, spruce and the placeable poplar tree are the exact same on easy, medium, and hard. Another thing to note from the data here is with most of the trees, it actually is possible to profit by placing a tree through the construction menu, despite the high cost. You're still going to lose a significant chunk of change just because of the cost of placement, but if, for example, you want to place an American Elm for $4,000, 
you can still turn that around for a profit on any difficulty. So keep that in mind if you just want to have a little bit extra income and you want to process a tree, by all means, place down a tree, cut it down, and process it for some extra cash. Now the very obvious difference when working with trees, selling a tree raw is essentially a garbage price. You still might make a slight profit if you purchase the tree through the, the construction menu, but generally speaking, it's going to be a terrible price. Obviously with the birch, we saw a whopping $19. The other trees, not too terribly much better. Especially on hard, there seems to be uh, an extra weight placement on processing the tree properly on hard, with a lot more forgiveness on normal and easy. So the more you process the tree on hard, the more profit you're going to get and the closer to easy difficulty numbers you're going to get. Uh, let's use the stone pine as an example. On hard, a whole $58 for the tree versus almost 3000 on easy, just for the raw tree. If you cut up the foliage, just the, the quick tap with the chainsaw to get rid of all the extra greenery on top, that puts that number up to uh, 290 which is a good five to six times increase in price versus almost 4,000 on easy, not as big of an increase. If you cut off the branches that are at the very top, that then puts that number up to 2658, which is almost another 10 times price increase versus uh, almost 6,000 on easy, which again, not nearly as big of an increase. If you chop the tree in half, which was kind of my, my default test for the, all of these trees was to cut it in half just to make it easier to transport. That puts the number up to 7,800, which is more than double. Granted, you also get almost double on easy at $10,000, which is a pretty significant number. Once you get to the, um, the meter increment lengths to try to figure out where the optimal length is to cut, essentially, six, seven, and eight meters was practically identical. Minor differences here and there, and I suspect those differences were more in um, Farming Simulator's method of cutting that removes part of the tree entirely if it's not enough to keep. I'm sure there's some sort of leader threshold to be able to keep that extra piece of wood versus deleting it, so I suspect that those numbers, six, seven, and eight meters, how closely related those are, are related to either the amount of wood that gets deleted on the end of the final cut or the length of the final piece being one of the shorter numbers. So if it's one through five meters, you get significantly less profit for the same piece of wood. Using the uh, regular pine tree as an example, cutting it in half gives you 3,200. Cutting it in eight meter lengths is 5,200. Cutting it in 7 meter lengths is 5258, and 6 meter lengths is 5287. And I suspect that little extra meter or two remainder at the end was the difference in the price. Because as you can see, with 5 meter, it's down to 4800, 4 meter is down to 4300, 3 meter is down to 377, 2 meter is down to about 3200, and 1 meter is down to uh, 2600. That is less than the price of just simply cutting the tree in half and being done with it. Only slightly more profit than just stripping off the foliage and selling the tree whole. So one meter increments, you can do it if you really need to, but you're going to get a lot more profit by just cutting the pieces longer and selling it in longer chunks, which is pretty much exactly what it said in the help menu. But it's nice to see where that threshold is between five and six meters. And I tested those numbers with the other trees as well. And as you can see, it's roughly the same. And again, I suspect those differences, especially the more significant differences like the shagbark hickory, are due to just simply how long the remainder pieces were. When I was cutting the shagbark hickory into eight meter lengths, that was only $6,000 versus six meter lengths at $6,400. I believe the difference to that was that the shagbark hickory was I believe 18 meters long. I don't recall and I don't really feel like going and finding out again by chopping down yet another tree. But if it's 18 meters long, that gives you three six meter lengths 
versus cutting it in 8 meter lengths that gives you two 8 meter chunks and then a small 2 meter remainder. That 2 meter remainder is worth a lot less. So you get a lot less overall. So when you're cutting up a tree, maybe take into account the overall length and determine if it's better to cut it into 6, 7, and 8 meter lengths based on what you're going to get in the output. Or if you have, you know, 5, 6 meter pieces and the last piece is 8 or 9 meters, leave it. Don't cut off that last bit. You're actually going to get more by just leaving it as a 9 meter length than you would cutting it to get a 6 meter length and then 3 meters. That kind of also is reflected in that half number with some of these trees just simply being better to cut them in half and having two 9 meter lengths or two 10 meter lengths than it would be to cut them into smaller chunks. This is probably something that someone with much more patience than me might want to test with that modded machine that can cut them into half meter lengths up to 24 and a half meters long to figure out if there is a number higher than eight meters that might be even more beneficial. But my suspicion is that the game was designed around six to eight meters and anything more than that isn't going to be a significant increase and it is going to require mods or hand calculation to get those numbers right. So more effort or mods, up to you. Another couple small things to note, as you may see over here, the oak and the placeable poplar had such wide bases that they were actually really difficult to find a viable cutting point. And as you can see, just at a glance here, that these stumps are very different lengths and different angles. It was quite a bit more difficult to find even length and even weight trees to do testing with due to this cut variation. Actually, you can see over here, I ended up shaving off many different pieces trying to get a piece that was even with my previous testing numbers since I didn't do it at the same time because I'm not that smart. So that is one difficulty in working with these trees. Most of the other ones cooperated just fine, but the oak and the placeable poplar were definitely much more difficult than the average tree, but they're still more than worth working with. And that, I think, will be it for this part two video on forestry, covering the sale prices of trees and where to sell them. I had intended to get into the production information, but much like the first video, it took me a lot longer to get to all of this information than I expected. So, I'm going to assume that I will get to a part three at some point in the near future, so stay tuned for that. For now, thank you for joining me. See you next time.